Hello professionals, here is Joe Rodão from Offshore Point and here we are with a brand new business novelty coming out of the oven about the recent battle that Microsoft declared with Zoom. Let's quickly see the intro and jump into it. If you stick to the end, I will compare the price difference between both and highlight the important aspects of each in order to help you make a smart decision. So let's cut the story now and talk about what is this battle about. As you know, the whole world of virtual meetings was shaken by Zoom's smartness. Everyone nowadays knows Zoom app, right? You know Zoom app, I know Zoom app, you probably have it in your phone, I have on mine, it works just like charm. Believe it or not, Eric Yuan, Zoom's founder, launched Zoom back there in April 2011. This software has almost 10 years. Amazing, you know? However, Zoom started being famous only on the last couple of years, appearing as a free, light, and impeccable alternative to the big plays on the market like Skype. Microsoft believed that they had everything under control and they dominated the whole segment for more than one decade. You could feel it on Hollywood movies. Whenever someone was doing a video call with someone else, it was always through Skype, right? Yeah, well, coronavirus changed the game and Zoom did an amazing job in keeping their fame free, light and impeccable. By forcing the upcoming need for virtual calls, Zoom managed to increase their capacity to sustain the exponential need and Zoom is still working just like a charm. On this regard, Microsoft failed catastrophically being exactly on the opposite side with Skype. Their worldwide famous video calling and conference tool became being so slow and unstable, crashing and failing on the most basic aspects of a video call. Connect, talk and share screen. Even when typing, sometimes delete and backspace simply stopped working at the same time and you could only get them back working if you start Skype. Can you believe that? Skype is still unstable and it seems like that Microsoft already abandoned the boat. If you go to the Microsoft Office product page for corporate companies, link is down here on the description, you will be able to see that Skype is no longer there. It's completely replaced by their brand new tool called Teams. Outsiders on this race and recently jump into the main lane leaving Skype behind, Microsoft has a collaboration software suite called Teams. It was there since March 2017, so roughly two years and a half, but only very recently it came into the spotlight. This collaboration tool was originally created to follow the current trend of less email and more collaboration, a field where Slack, a big player on this segment, and very popular among startups, navigate very smoothly. With the current intense demand for video conference, Microsoft has just declared battle with Zoom, their biggest rival at the current times. With stellar new features recently launched and a focus that could tempt business users to switch, Microsoft is so focused on Teams that only in July 2020, last month, since this video was recorded, they launched five new releases. Just this week, Microsoft have launched some previously announced features as part of a new offering called Advanced Communication. Microsoft's new Advanced Communication plan is right now available as a 60-day free trial via Teams Admin Center or via Microsoft Teams website right now in the middle of August 2020, just last month from the time this video was recorded, as communicated by Microsoft in their blog. Check here in the description for the blog link. It can also be added to your existing Microsoft 365 or Office 365 page subscription from today itself. One of the major enhancements was the Mega Meetings, hosting up to 20,000 people together in view-only mode and up to 1,000 people in interactive mode. This is definitively unattractive to corporate eyes. Teams will switch to view only automatically whenever the video participants go over 1,000, so it's nothing for you as a IT admin to concern about. In this regard, Zoom can only go up to 1,000 in total, which, you know, between me and you, is already too much. 
Another stellar new feature in Teams is the Enhanced Admin Control, which allows you to add your company branding to a meeting. In the next few months, you will also have the ability to add branded meetings lobby. Meanwhile, Microsoft has also announced Teams Calling, a cloud-based phone system. The idea with this is to make it easy to connect, take your Teams contacts with you whenever you are working from home, or shift into part-time, part-office. Microsoft's latest Teams move is an obvious grab for the business market, using the strength of its other offering as a differentiator to its biggest video conferencing rival, Zoom. One of the most highly anticipated features that could persuade Zoom's users to switch is the ability to view 49 participants on the screen at once. But again, a feature that Zoom already had for at least a couple of years and is one of their brightest stars. Not to be outdone, Zoom has also added new features in Zoom 5.2, including more filters and reactions, the ability to adjust light, and the highly demanded noise cancellation. At the low setting, Zoom says that this can also soft the background music to complete a yoga class or a game night. <laughs> Not a good sample, right? But uh, you know, let's move on. As you can see, oh, my light went off. As you can see, Zoom is trending to attend high-end users, while Teams is covering both ends, corporate and end users. Although the noise cancellation is a game changer for business meetings, Zoom ensures that their target is the lifestyle market. Zoom has also got the advantage that it just works well. While some complaints of lagging issues in Microsoft Teams happens, as well as weird noise on someone else's microphone, people that are not muted on meetings with five or 10 or more people, and especially when meetings grow very large. And let's not even talk here about Skype. Man, that thing just became, oh my God. Microsoft promised that the performance issue on Teams was addressed on these several latest releases in July. At the same time, some people are worried about Zoom and are looking for a secure alternative where Microsoft holds a long and prestigious reputation of a serious and honorable company. Both Bill Gates and as well as his current successor, Satya Nadella, are always ranked as the greatest leaders of modern times. Right now, Zoom did a great job. They are at the spot with honors. However, Microsoft is a big corporation with decades of market experience and a huge budget to play seriously on anything they want. They just merged collaboration software suite with online conferencing on the same tool. It's like Slack and Zoom getting fused together. Not a bad movement, don't you think? All right, fellows. And as promised, here the price comparison between the free version and the first paid version between Teams and Zoom. At first, both are quite even with a small variation on some aspects. Let's start commenting each one of the red highlights. Hosting maximum. Teams beat Zoom in three times. Hosting on the free version is up to 300 people, while Zoom can host only up to 100. Yet, if you need to host meetings with more than 100 people, either you have a really big family, circle of friends, or medium company. And in this case, you definitely need to purchase a license from either option. Meeting duration. This criteria is definitely a positive point to Teams. Zoom is really annoying with this 40 minutes limit, while Teams hold up to 24 hours, way enough for virtually anything you need. Scheduling meetings. Teams is able to schedule meetings by itself and they are automatically integrated with Outlook, while Zoom needs to make use of an add-in or a Chrome extension for it. Chat. This is a small deal, however quite useful while in a meeting. Normally, I'm used to open another chat window with someone in the same meeting as myself to discuss any aspect of the meeting. With this feature, I just need to change the dropdown and I can chat with a person in particular. Even though this dropdown is very small and down there on the corner, very easily unnotable. Video recording. Zoom is capable to record the meeting, even in the free version, while Teams can't. So, positive point to Zoom. Whiteboard. Zoom has whiteboard built-in and easy to use during meetings, while in Teams you must configure another tool from Microsoft called Whiteboard to enable this feature, and you must configure this integration, not a straightforward process. Tech support. You are able to obtain Zoom support to handle any of your technical issues while in Teams, the tech support is only available on the paid version. Extras. Alternatively, Microsoft Teams 
is the all-in-one work stream collaboration service for Microsoft, designed to integrate simply with the rest of the Microsoft 365 stack. And we all know that most of the world use Office tools. Also, Teams include real-time closed capture. It's not 100% accurate, but just think that uh, you can have meetings with people even talk in a different language and you would be able to understand them. This is very promising. Now jumping into the paid version. On the first level paid version, Teams delivers a little more unique set of benefits in comparison to Zoom, starting with the price itself. Microsoft costs only $5 a month, while Zoom jumps from zero to $14.99 a month. Zoom adds one interesting feature, which is assigning someone else to be your scheduler, like your assistant, while Teams doesn't have this feature at all. General's online storage is classical for Microsoft since several years already. Microsoft grants you one terabyte of online storage space for anything you want, while Zoom gives you only one gigabyte per user and only for audio and video files originated from the meeting itself. Finally, Microsoft holds an impressive mark of 250 plus integrated apps inside and outside Microsoft, while Zoom only have 24 for now. In defense of Zoom, if you think better, most of these 250 plus integration from Teams are towards Office and Microsoft. And if you look to the 24 ones that a Zoom offer, they are against the most popular market tools. Conclusion, both Microsoft Teams and Zoom have a lot of value to offer for those in search of a simple and effective collaboration tool. You can use each platform to build a comprehensive environment for communication, complete with integration, and even telephone too. What's more, Microsoft Teams and Zoom both offer a free version of their platform so you can test out of tech before you invest your money. Microsoft Teams is excellent for internal communication thanks to its robust set of integration with Office 365 environment. It offers easily chatting and channel solutions, great for keeping your team on the same page. Alternatively, Zoom is more appealing for lifestyle, personal and startups with a fantastic one-click meeting join options. My verdict? I believe that the Teams is better for my type of use, especially taking consideration on what uh, annoys me most, the 40 minutes meeting limit on Zoom's free version. That is really a problem for me. While Teams doesn't care about the meeting duration at all, you know, between me and you, 24 hours, even from the free versions on Teams, it's a lot of time. On the paid side, the price is a big competitive aspect in, in favor of Microsoft as well as the one terabyte space only for you to use on anything you want. What are your thoughts about Zoom and Teams? Which one do you use most? Which one do you like most? Do you think that Zoom will continue being this video conferencing power after life goes back to normal and people return to office? Or do you think that Microsoft as a big corporation will regain the market? Share your thoughts down here in the comments. Want to know more updates about corporate world and fresh new views on the latest market releases? So don't hesitate to subscribe and activate the bell. If you feel this content was relevant for you, don't forget my like. Thanks for watching. See you next week.